Now we're going to drop in on Jean Harlow in her dressing room, probably at a movie theater. She looks so relaxed and casual and happy. I wonder if the big bottle on her dressing table is witch hazel. We don't know who shot this footage or why. It's not a typical home movie. The filmmaker seems to be someone who Harlow knows. I think it might be a test of some amateur film stock or something like that, and Harlow agreed to be part of it, which, lucky for us, we get to see her. Harlow got her big break in the 1930 feature Hell's Angels, made by Howard Hughes. The next year she appeared on screen in several films, including Public Enemy and Platinum Blonde. We estimate that this home movie was shot in late 1931 or early 1932, after Harlow had finished filming Beast of the City with Walter Houston. After the movie wrapped, Harlow went on an extensive personal appearance tour of the East Coast and Midwest. The tour was very successful, with Harlow filling theaters night after night for three months. You'll notice that the dressing room is pretty simple. It looks like a small dressing room Harlow might have used at a theater, rather than something that you'd find at a studio. Another clue we use to date the footage is Harlow's traveling beauty mark, which doesn't always appear at the same place in her films and photographs. While we don't know the whole story behind this home movie, one thing we can say for sure there's something about Harlow that's just mesmerizing. And that's our little visit with Jean Harlow. Now we'll go to the Beverly Hills Tennis Club for some home movies shot by actor Gilbert Rowland. Here's Ben Lyon, who co-starred in Hell's Angels, Janet Gaynor. This footage was probably shot in the fall of 1933. That's Gene Raymond on the left. He had just made Flying Down to Rio. And notice how undeveloped Beverly Hills is in the background. Here's Frank Morgan, the wonderful Wizard of Oz, with his wonderful hairnet. Director Frank Cabra. He's probably working on It Happened One Night at this time. Producer David O. Selznick and Irene Mayer Selznick, who later became a noted theatrical producer. Here's Constance Bennett. She and Gilbert Rowland met in 1933 while filming After Tonight and started a long romantic relationship. They married several years later and had two daughters. Here's Basil Rathbone. The home movie camera brings out the silly side in a lot of people. Screenwriter Erwin Gelsey, whose credits include Gold Diggers of 1933. And one of the club's wait staff. Roland filmed everyone at the club, not just the Hollywood folks that we're focusing on. Composer Richard Rogers. Here's producer Pandro Berman. The woman on the left is Marion Marks, who was married to Zeppo Marks. This is right around the time Duck Soup would have been in theaters. There's Zeppo. It was the last Marx Brothers film that Zeppo appeared in. Robert Montgomery. MGM star and father of actress Elizabeth Montgomery. And here's Gilbert Rowland with Constance Talmadge. Talmadge had already retired from the screen after an amazing career. Rowland was in pictures for almost 60 years. He started in silence and he made his last film in 1981. He loved tennis and was one of the best players in Hollywood. He played almost every day into his 70s. He was an early member of the Beverly Hills Tennis Club and used his home movie camera to document the club for three decades. As you can see in this footage, people seem to really enjoy having Roland film them. He was a very friendly and popular man. Now 
jumping ahead to some Kodachrome footage of the club. This is around 1945. They've added a big swimming pool. A lot of families are using the facilities. They've expanded their outdoor dining area and they've got some snazzy new pink and black furniture. Here's John Garfield. Billy Wilder, who took home two Oscars in 1945. And that's Errol Flynn on the left. Gilbert Rowland was asked who the best player in Hollywood was on the tennis court, and he said Errol Flynn. And that's Joy Page on the right. You'll remember her from Casablanca. And here's Peter Lorre, Richard Conti, and John Garfield again, mixing it up. And that's our look at the Beverly Hills Tennis Club.